Hey guys, Mr. B here. In this video, we're going to be going through chapter 7.1 on ions. All right, so um, this chapter, we are going to be learning about new compounds and, uh, and these things called ions. So this is the first chapter where we really get into some of the more heavier chemistry topics. Um, and this is basically going to be lead us, leading us into the second half of this class. So I would say that this chapter is really, really important that you understand um, because it's going to set a base for a lot of stuff that's going to come up in the second half of this class. Um, so just do the best you can. So here we go. Uh, first, we're going to talk about valence electrons. So what are valence electrons? So by definition, valence electrons are the electrons in the highest occupied energy level of an element's atoms. What the heck does that mean? We're going to go over that in a second, okay? Um, but the number of valence electrons very much plays a role in the chemical properties of that element. So let me give you an example here of what they're talking about when they're saying in the highest energy level, okay? So let's write out um, the electron configuration for carbon. Um, now, I'm not going to use the periodic table here, so I apologize. Uh, I'm just going to write this out real quick, okay? So this is the electron configuration for carbon. Now, if we wanted to know how many valence electrons this atom has, we need to find the electrons in the highest energy level. Now to remember from chapter five, the energy levels are denoted by these big numbers. So energy level one, okay? There are two electrons here, that's energy level one. So maybe we'll do this in like a different color. Let's maybe go um, blue, okay? So that's energy level one. Then we have these electrons in the second energy level, right? Because they have two on them. So that's second energy level. Um, let's say do this in pink. So of these two um, energy levels, right? Energy level one and energy level two, the highest of the two energy levels is gonna be energy level two, which means all of these here, all of these electrons are in the highest energy, energy level. They would be considered the valence electrons. So carbon, would have four, four valence electrons, okay? And it would be the two electrons in the 2s orbital and the two electrons in the 2p orbital. Um, now there's another way to, for us to determine this, but I wanted to show you it that way with electron configurations first, okay? Now the other way that we can find the number of valence electrons is by looking at the periodic table and looking at the group number. So what the heck does that mean? Well, let's pull up a periodic table. And actually, you know what? Let's um, let's pull up the one that we have in our notes, or I guess uh, the paper one that you probably have access to. So here is our periodic table, okay? Now the group, a group is the column number. So this is gonna be group one, group two. And this is only gonna work for the representative elements. So the representative elements are these columns, okay? These are all the representative elements. Um, the elements that are in the middle of the periodic table, okay, these ones, these are the transition elements. So um, this this doesn't work for them. So we're not going to worry about these ones. We'll worry about these ones later, okay? So we have group one, okay, group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven, and group eight. Um, now, these numbers are also represented by Roman numerals. So we have Roman numeral, and I don't know how good you are at Roman numerals, but one, okay, Roman numeral one. So that's one A, and then we have two A. This is three A, so this is group three, group four, group five A, group six A, seven A, and eight A. Okay, so to also find the number of, um, to also find the number of valence electrons, all we have to do is look at the group number. And uh, for carbon, the group that carbon is in is four, right here, four A, right? So carbon has four valence electrons. So we could either write out the electron configuration like we did in the previous example, or we could just look at here and go, oh, it's in group four. It has four valence electrons, okay? Okay, so super simple, but it's something that we're gonna use a lot in this chapter. Now, one thing to know is that elements that are in the same column, like group four, for example, all have the same number of valence electrons. And so valence electrons 
are going to play a big role in determining the chemical properties of that element. So if we have all of these elements that have the same number of valence electrons, they will have similar chemical properties. So elements like carbon, silicon, and germanium, which are all found in the fourth column of the periodic table, okay, right here, fourth column, will all share very similar chemical properties. Um, all of these are very heavily used in electronics. Um, carbon, uh, a material made from carbon is grapha uh, graphene, which is very highly electrical conductive, um, very electrically conductive. We have silicon, which of course makes up pretty much all the electronic computer chips and circuits and stuff that we have and phones and computers. And then germanium is also very heavily used in things like night vision goggles, again, for electrical components. All right, now, one thing that we also can do to show valence electrons is draw an electron dot diagram or a dot structure, or also known as a Lewis diagram. There's a lot of different names for this thing. Um, so we're gonna write AKA Lewis um, structure, I guess. Uh, maybe make this font a little bit smaller so we can actually see it all. 24, there we go. Okay, Lewis structure. So what this is basically is, is we are taking the number of valence electrons and we are putting them around the chemical symbol for the element and then we're putting them as dots. So we'll notice here like elements in, in column 1A, which is hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium. And again, on the periodic table, that's right here, right? 1A. So hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium. They each have one valence electron, and we show that by drawing one dot on the chemical symbol for the element. Elements in column two have two valence electrons. They have two dots, okay? Elements in uh, column three have three valence electrons. Now, one thing you'll notice is we do still follow some of the electron configuration rules when we have to write these. So we see that, um, for example, in the second column here, we have beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. You'll notice that these two electrons that are on these symbols are not paired together, okay? They're on separate sides of the element. They're, they're apart, and that's because of Hund's rule, right? Remember, electrons don't want to pair up. We want to put singles in everything first before we pair them up. So you'll notice here on in elements in element uh, or column three, group three, there are three dots, but each again, each one is separate. They're not paired together. They're not right next to each other. Um, column four, we have four dots. On Each one is on a separate side. Whereas now here, look at in column five or group five, we have two dots on the top that are paired together and three that are not paired, okay? Same thing here with, with group six. We have now two pairs. We've got a pair on the top and a pair on the left that are paired together and these two singles on the right and on the bottom until eventually we get up to eight, in which case at eight, we have all four that are all four pairs of electrons or basically each, uh, we have two electrons that are all paired up in a total of eight uh, or four pairs, okay? Um, so we'll do some practice on this uh, later on, but this is, uh, that's what this is, so. Okay, um, moving on, oh, let's unzoom here. <laughs> you can actually see stuff, there we go. Okay, so it says atoms of which elements tend to gain electrons, atoms of which elements tend to lose electrons. So we're gonna learn here about the octet rule and um, basically what it means to lose or gain electrons and become what we call an ion. So back in 1916, a chemist named Gilbert Lewis, and this is where the whole Lewis structure thing comes in, okay? It's named after this guy. Um, basically realized that elements such as the noble gases, um, and just to remind you the noble gases, the noble gases are these elements here in the right column on the periodic table, okay? These elements are very chemically non-reactive, meaning that they are very difficult to actually make materials with because they don't react in chemical reactions. Um, you can mix them up with all kinds of stuff and they just, they don't do anything, okay? And the reason why they don't do this, according to Gilbert Lewis, was because they have eight valence electrons and this is known as the octet rule. And so basically his idea was is that atoms, any atom, is always trying to gain eight valence electrons. And they will do so by either gaining electrons or losing electrons to eventually get eight 
in their outermost energy level. So they're trying to essentially achieve the same electron configuration as a noble gas by having eight valence electrons in their highest energy level. Again, this is known as the octet rule. Um, an easy way to remember this, and I just like the saying, is that eight is great, okay? Eight is great. It's the magic number. We're always trying to get eight. So when we gain or lose electrons, oh, I think I missed the slide here. There we go, sorry. Um, so when it comes to elements, metals tend to lose valence electrons and non-metals tend to gain valence electrons. All right, so now we gotta talk about the periodic table a little bit. Where are metals and non-metals? So on your periodic table, again, this is what we have. I'm gonna erase all this stuff here, okay? And we're gonna get rid of some of these, these colors and junk. Um, now mine is not colored, okay? Yours is not colored either. However, there are a lot of colored periodic tables. So we are going to actually pull up a colored periodic table and we can see this a little bit better, okay? So here's a colored version. On the periodic table, there is a very important divider, and that is this divider here, which is these like kind of teal turquoise elements, okay? These are known as the metalloids. This is known as the staircase on the periodic table, and these elements here basically divide the periodic table into two halves, okay? The right side of this staircase, so the, all these elements here in green and in pink are the non-metals. And in fact, it even shows that right here. So we have the non-metals here in green and in pink. These are the non-metals, which there's not very many. We have the metalloids, which is the staircase here. This is the dividing line, okay? And then everything that is to the left of the staircase, which are all of these metals, all of these elements, these are all metals. So you'll notice that we have all of these elements to the left of the staircase, okay? To the left of the staircase, all of those are metals. Everything to the right of the staircase are non-metals. So elements to the left, which are metals, all of these ones over here, these all tend to um, lose electrons so that way they can become stable like a noble gas. And all of these elements over here tend to gain electrons so that they can become stable like a noble gas. Okay, now we will learn again more here in a second about what that means and how that works, but we wanna just know where the metals and non-metals are. Now, as for the metalloids, okay, the ones in the staircase, they will tend to do both. They will gain electrons and lose electrons, which is why we kind of categorize them as metalloids because they don't act like a metal or a non-metal, they can act like either or. So they're sort of like a hybrid. Um, we won't deal a whole lot with them because they're a little bit more complicated, but regardless, anyway, so. So what does it mean then now when we're gaining electrons or losing electrons, what's happening? So when an atom loses electrons, it becomes something that we call a cation, which is a positively charged ion. So first off, an ion, okay, the, the word ion, an ion is an atom that has an electrical charge on it after having gained or lost electrons, okay? So an ion is an atom that is, ha it has a charge on it, and it has a charge because it's lost or it's gained electrons. And specifically, when that atom has lost electrons, it will become positively charged, and it will become a cation. Okay, a nice way of remembering this, and it's just a silly little saying, but it works pretty well, is that cats, Cats have paws or paws, right? Positive. Cats have paws. So cations are positive, okay? Just a silly, silly little way to remember this. So here are some common cations that are produced from metal atoms, okay? This shows here, oh, sorry, this here shows sodium. So the electron configuration for sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. The valence electron in this is going to be the 3s1, okay? This is the valence electron right here. This is the electron in the highest energy level, which is energy level three, and there's only one. So sodium will lose this one electron because it's a metal and metals tend to lose electrons. And when that happens, now the electrons in the highest energy level are energy level two, and there are a total of eight. We have two in the s orbital and six in the p orbital 
That is a total of eight valence electrons or an octet and therefore the octet rule, okay? And now at this point, sodium has the exact same configuration as a neon atom when it's an ion. So this is what sodium looks like before it loses that electron. The one electron it loses, this valence electron now is gone, and now this is what its electron configuration looks like, which is exactly the same as a neon atom. And at that point, it's happy and it's stable, and it is now a cation, okay? We put this little plus sign as a positive charge to show that it now has a positive charge and it is a cation, okay? All right, um, if we wanted to show it with a dot structure, we'd have one dot here on the sodium, and then um, that dot would essentially just go away. And now it's Na with a plus charge and then this electron is you know, going off somewhere else, so. All right, um, now sodium is very um, commonly ionized in sodium vapor lamps. So street lamps basically right in your neighborhood or outside the kind of orangey yellowy looking lights that sodium vapor that's inside those that are be that's being energized with electric current and that's why they glow that color so it's actually ionized sodium um here's the well, another example so this is magnesium magnesium is in column 2 of the periodic table so it has two valence electrons it's shown here with two dots it will lose those two electrons it will become an ion with a charge of 2 plus because now it's lost two electrons and um now it has the same configuration again as neon, okay? Um, so magnesium ions are very commonly found in walnuts or other types of nuts. They're very helpful, very good for your digestive system, um, stuff like that, okay? So you'll notice here now that all of the atoms in column one, okay, all of these elements in column one, hydrogen included, okay, it's not shown here, but hydrogen is in column one, will tend to lose one valence electron and make a charge of positive one as a cation. Elements in column two of the periodic table have two valence electrons. Therefore, they will tend to lose two valence electrons and make a charge of two plus. And in fact, if we look on the periodic table that I have given you guys, you'll notice here in the corner, we'll even zoom in further so you can see this, we have one plus, one plus, one plus, right? The charges are even shown here for you. Here in column two, two plus, two plus, two plus, okay, those charges are shown. Now, there are other numbers too on some of these other boxes. Like for example, these ones in the middle, okay, these ones in the middle, there's like all these numbers. We'll learn later about these elements, okay? This, this doesn't work for these elements. So disregard this whole middle section, okay? We're, we're gonna learn about those later, right now. Just don't worry about those ones. Um, as for the non-metals, we'll talk about those in a second. We'll also notice that there's a bunch of numbers here, right? There's like all these numbers. Um, we're gonna ignore all of these ones. We're just gonna look at the top number. So the top number here is gonna be negative four, negative three, negative two, negative two, negative one, okay? Ignore all the bottom ones. But again, we'll talk about those here in a second. So I just wanted to show you in your periodic table that your periodic table actually does have these charges on there for you. Okay, it's very helpful. However, you should know how to find these charges without having to look at your periodic table um, or at least what I mean is like, you should be able to know these charges without actually having to look here to find it um, because we actually know how it works. But anyway, so let's continue on. Um, zoom back out here, there we go. Here shows a copper atom. Um, a copper atom, its, elect its, its outermost um, valence electron is in the 4s orbital. It will lose that electron and become a copper ion of Cu plus one. And um, now it has a noble gas configuration similar to that of, um, it would be argon. Okay, same to that as argon, so. Okay, anyway, so let's, uh, let's keep on moving, like I said before. Um, formation of anions, so what are anions? Now we just finished talking about cations, okay? So cations are when you have a metal that's lost an electron and becomes a cation, and it's positive. Anions are the opposite. So we have elect, uh, atoms that will gain electrons, and when they gain electrons, they will become negatively charged, and then we call those anions, okay? Um, the way that I like to remember it is basically, think of it like this. Um, a negative ion is equal to, uh, is an anion, okay? So anion, we can think of it like, a negative 
ion. That's the best way I can remember it. But either way, um, an anion is an atom or a group of atoms with a negative charge. There's also a little part here we got to remember or learn about, and that is how we name it. Now, we didn't talk about this with cations, so I'll talk about this here now because I kind of forgot, and that's my bad. Um, but negative ions or anions have a, a, a name change. So first off, let's talk about naming positive cations. Okay, so let's go back here. So when we have a cation, let's say, for example, um, sodium, okay? This would be a sodium ion. In fact, we'll even show it here. Um, this is a sodium ion. So it's named sodium ion. It's the element sodium. It's an ion. Pretty straightforward, okay? For positive ions, that's how we name them. Um, we'll have another one here. Magnesium ion. It's magnesium. It has a charge. It's an ion. We call it a magnesium ion. Um, negative ions, however, anions have a name change. So an example of an anion would be like oxygen, okay? So oxygen um, has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. It has six valence electrons, okay? And the six valence electrons are in this outermost energy level, the 2p, okay, or 2s and 2p. Oh, let's do this maybe blue. So this is six valence electrons. Oxygen wants to have eight, okay? Eight is the magic number. So to do that, it needs to gain two more. So when it gains two more, it will have eight valence electrons. And when that happens, oxygen will now become an ion and it will have a chemical formula or a symbol of O, two minus, because it has gained two negatively charged particles. And this ion, we would name it, oh, sorry, uh, we would name it not an oxygen ion. So, okay, we're not gonna name it like this. This is how we would name a metal ion. We have to have this ide ending. So we're gonna replace the ending of oxygen with ide, and instead, this is going to be named an oxide ion. And um, I'm sure you've seen this in a lot of different places, right? Um, sodium chloride, um, hydrogen peroxide, right? That ide ending, that ide ending is an indication that you're talking about something that has a negative charge on it. Okay. Whereas again, the positive ions like sodium and magnesium, we didn't do that. We don't call it like a sodiide ion or a magnesiide ion. Um, that just sounds weird. So um, elements here in column five of the periodic table, like nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic have five valence electrons. They want to have eight, so they will gain three and they will make a charge of negative three. Elements in column six have six valence electrons. They will gain two and make a charge of negative two. Elements in column seven have seven valence electrons. They will gain one and make a charge of negative one. Okay, and again, all of these then have an ide ending. So this would be a nitride ion, a phosphide ion, a sulfide ion, a fluoride ion, a chloride ion, a bromide ion, oxide. Okay, so they all have that ide ending. All right, um, this here just shows the chlorine um, atom gaining an electron here. So we can see that its valence electrons are in the 3s and 3p orbitals. We have a total of seven right here. It gains one and we get to eight and now it has the same configuration as argon, okay? Excuse me. All right, um, now we're just gonna skip past some of these other little slides here and just continue talking about information. Um, Negatively charged ions in seawater um, are mostly chloride ions. So, you know, salt, sodium chloride, obviously chlorine is in there and it's an ion. Um, there are these elements in the seventh column called the halogens. They have seven valence electrons. Uh, we call them the halide ions. They're basically the one of the most reactive elements on the periodic table because they only have, they have seven valence electrons. They only need to gain one more. So a lot of times they are very highly chemically reactive. 
because they only need to gain one more electron and a lot of times they will just rip that electron off of stuff. And when that happens, you have a chemical reaction take place. So the halogens are all of these elements right here. Okay, these are the halogens with fluorine being the most reactive of all of them. Um, so fluorine is very dangerous, but all of these elements, if you saw them in nature, um, they're typically very deadly or dangerous. So chlorine is a poisonous gas. Fluorine's not good. Uh, you know, iodine, bromine are used to like disinfect and kill stuff. Um, so yeah, anyway. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, let's just get past some of this stuff. This, this is a little chart. It just talks about some of the different uh, names of ions. There's some other weird ones in here like nitrate and stuff. We'll, we'll learn about those later. They're called polyatomic ions. Anyway, so let's get to some examples here, okay? Um, that way we can finish up because this video is probably getting a little bit too long. So um, the beaker shown on the right contains iodine vapor. It's kind of a purple looking gas, kind of cool looking, uh, very pretty, but again, not really something you want to be breathing in. Um, so they want us to write the symbol and name of the ion formed when an iodine atom gains one electron. Okay, so first off, element symbol for iodine. We need to find iodine on the periodic table. So iodine is here. Okay, so the symbol for iodine is just a capital I. So we're gonna write capital I. You know, it looks like a lowercase l, it is a capital I. That's just the font that we're using. Maybe let's change the font to something different. There we go. Um, so this is the symbol, um, but if it's an ion and it's gained one electron, and uh, we know it's gained one electron because it has seven, okay, it's in column seven, it wants to have eight, so we need to add one electron. However, Remember that electrons are negatively charged. So when we gain an electron, electrons are negative. So we are gaining negative charge. Therefore, the charge on the iodine, when it gains one negative electron is gonna be negative one. So the symbol here is gonna be I minus one. I think it's bigger, okay? I minus one. And as for its name, because it is a negative ion, it's an anion. So rather than calling this an iodine ion, we need to call this an iodide ion, okay? That i ending needs to be there. All right, taking a look at letter B, a strontium atom loses two electrons. All right, so let's find strontium on the periodic table. Strontium is over here, okay? It is in column two of the periodic table. So strontium has two valence electrons. Its symbol is SR and it is losing two electrons. So it's losing two. Remember that I, electrons are negative. So if you lose a negative thing, you become positive, okay? You become the opposite. So this is gonna be positive two plus. And since it is a cation, we don't need to change the name. We're just gonna call it strontium ion, okay? This ide ending again only comes into play when we're dealing with negative ions. Strontium is not a negative ion, so. Okay, that is pretty much it for this section of notes. Um, there are practice problems, of course, after this, so hopefully that makes sense. But of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, email me, talk to me in person. Maybe we can do a Google Meet, do some tutoring. So, all right, guys, I'm Mr. B. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.